I came over here uh, when I finished playing American football and finished university. I uh, came over here as a uh, Fulbright scholar to study Shakespeare. Um, and was pretty much at that point, that was 95, 96, and I was a dyed in the wool metal punk whatever. And kind of had forgotten that the first gig I ever saw was the Chicago Blues Festival because my old man took me. Um, the second gig I ever saw was Taste of Chicago or Chicago, Chicago Fest. Fest. Yeah. Um, you know, that had like Motown and, you know, proper, proper. And then the third gig I ever saw was the Blues Festival again because it was free and, and this, that, and the other thing. And I kind of, I don't know, you rebel, don't you, when you're a teenager. It took me coming over here to, to discover A, that I could sing that kind of music and B, how much I, I'd forgotten how much I loved it and how much it was part of my DNA installed by this guy. Um, so when we played Upton 2004 with my, I had an eight piece uh, rhythm and blues jump jive band uh, under the bridge uh, and I got out of the car and I went, <laughs> kind of listened and I went, this is, this is like Chicago. To this day, it's the closest that I've felt to home is the Upton Blues Festival. What's your first impression? First of all, I love it. The thing I think makes it homier, if, if there's such a thing, is that to get from one stage to the other, you walk by pubs where there are also bands playing. And in Chicago, you know, the place has a one central place for the festival, and all the bars and cub, pubs that have bands playing are 15, 20 blocks away. So that's not, that hominess isn't there. But that, I think, really makes it, as I see it. Music's a great but the fact that you have all kinds of music as you're going from one place to the other makes it really special, in my opinion. Did, did you kind of set out to educate your son on the blues, or did it just happen? I think it just, well, I, I only listen to music. A, it'll make me want to get up and dance. B, if it's got some kind of message to it, or it's a protest or something. Three, if I can sing along. And four, if I have an immediate urge to run out and buy it. And I thought about that, and I said, that's the blues. All of those things put together make the blues. And I think that's kind of how I got into it, just from, from that. And he, he uh, he's an independent cuss, you know what <laughs> And, uh, you know, I don't know, I thought probably he wouldn't like it as a rebellion against his old man, but that never happened. So. Did you invite the old man over here or did he invite himself? Oh, I've been trying to get him here for years. And this was, uh, and this was all planned for 2020. And then the pandemic hit, uh, I think possibly the the potential for two Steinhouses sharing the same space at this festival was too great for the universe to handle. <laughs> um, but it is, it, it is funny is that, you know, um, through, uh, through my childhood and through adulthood, one of the key things that has always bonded the two of us together is the love of music. Um, and one of the key things that bonds me and particularly my oldest son together is the love of music and sharing, hey, have you checked this out and things like that. And quite, <laughs> quite often it's because none of our friends listen to what we listen to across the three generations. So we're going, hey, have you heard this kind of thing? Um, so, you know, uh, very early on when I started working with the festival, I brought my sons here as well to say, this is what is possible. This is the kind of thing, you know, the, the, the inclusivity, the, the joyfulness, the, as you say, the homey feel, yeah. you know, is, uh, is real. You know, the, the roots of the blues is in music for the people, folk music, and there is still that element here, despite the growth year on year uh, of the festival, which, is, which keeps me coming back.